remember the Jeffersons. <laughs> remember that that show is a spin off of the Archie Bunkers show, you know, all, all, all in the family. Very good. Now, George and his family at one time um, lived in the community with Archie Bunker. I think it was in Queens. Yeah. Yes. But his um, dry cleaning business did so well that he was able to move up to the east side. And if you remember the um, theme song of that new show at that time was started with the verse, well, we're moving on up to the east side to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Moving on up to the east side, we finally got a piece of the pie. That's the American dream, my friends. And what a dream it is. I mean, people live out this promise that if you have the opportunity, perhaps if you work hard enough, you can move up. Parents do this so that their children can have a better life. For generations, people in families do better than the generation before. You know, as I listened these past two weeks to the speakers at the conventions, I heard this story over and over again. People expressing gratitude for what their ancestors, their parents, had done to make it possible for them to have a better education, to have a better life, to live in a better, safer neighborhood, to have opportunities that their parents didn't have, to be able to feel more secure than their parents ever did. It's, it's a dream that we work hard on. And it's not just an American dream. In fact, my own family story is very much the same. With my grandparents moving into Kingston in order that my parents may have a better opportunity in schools there. And then my father working hard in school. He would tell stories about, you know, not having electricity in the evenings and how they would gather under the street light to read the newspaper and to study. You know that whole story about you no know, walking uphill. You know, so he had his stories too. But in truth, he did work hard. He worked hard because he wanted his parents to be proud. He worked hard because he wanted to better himself, and he worked hard for his children so that they would have a better opportunity. And in my growing up years, I saw that change, where we moved out of our grandparents' house to our own house in a neighborhood that was more in the suburbs of Kingston, and then by the time I was in high school, we had even moved into another area where we could go to better schools. It is a dream. It is what we feel makes us secure. And then we think of the things that we have. We surround ourselves with things to show that we have made it. We have finally got a piece of the pie. And then we hear the lessons today. And we wonder, is Jesus saying this isn't a good thing? That having things that show that we are secure, that we are financially all right, that it isn't a good thing? But what Jesus actually says is, take care, be on guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Take care, be on guard. Be on guard that you don't think that it's all about you because you see, that's what the rich 
farmer did. Think of his story. He is already fine. He's wealthy. He's a rich landowner. He may have inherited it. He may have worked hard for what he had. But that year, according to Jesus in his the story, that year his harvest was so abundant that he didn't even know what to do with it. It filled his barn and still there was more to be stored. <coughs> and so what did he do? He got into a conversation with himself. A wonderful conversation where you hear, I, 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 all about me, 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 what am I going to do? He talks to himself, even within the conversation he says, I will say to myself, it's all about self. I'm going to build bigger barns and store my stuff. Because then I can really be secure. I don't have to worry. But that's not what Jesus wants of us. Be on guard. Be on guard against greed. It's not about us. We are called in times of abundance when we know that we have our gifts, when we have time, when we have treasures, to remember the source of those gifts, to give thanks to God, to give thanks for the people who made it possible. I think that landowner forgot, forgot the workers who helped harvest the crop, forgot that God gave the right climate, the right whether the right soil kept the rabbits and the squirrels out. <laughs> <laughs> he was quite blind to the fact that it was his riches, his abundance was not all about him. And then he also forgot the other people in the community. He had more than he could use in a lifetime. But at no point in that conversation with self did he think, maybe I could share this with my neighbor. Maybe my gifts would make someone else, someone else happy, would feed someone who is hungry, would make it possible for someone to work a little less and spend some time with family. Maybe what I can give can make it better for someone else. Because that's what we are called to do. In our abundance, our first job is to look around, to give thanks to those who made it possible, to recognize God's hand in it, and the people who have helped, and then to say, where can I serve? Where is there a need? What can I do? And not to worry. Because a lot of times when we surround ourselves with things, it's because we think they make us secure. And we worry if we don't have enough. We worry that we are going to have less than we need. But if we read on in Luke, we get to that wonderful, wonderful invitation that Jesus gives to the crowd and to the disciples. He says, look up at the ravens. Look out at the lilies. They don't have any barns to store anything, and yet God cares for them. They don't have to worry because they are taken care of by God. We are in God's hands. We don't need to worry that if we share our gifts, if we share our time, if we share our talents, we are going to have less than we need. God is able to provide. Jesus tells the people, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants us to prosper. 
He wants us to do well. You know, through Jesus, we are moving up. We are moving up to a better life, to making a better community, a place where we take care of each other, where we give God thanks, where we learn to love generously and unselfishly. And there is nothing wrong with that. Amen. Amen. Amen.